So critical values Only this time, the critical values are going to separate what we're going to call the rejection region from the fail to reject region. I might have mentioned that before, but it didn't make a whole lot of sense back in Chapter 7 because we never really worked with it. Now we get to work with it. So a critical value separates what we're going to call the rejection region from the fail to reject region. Why is it important now? Hey, we're trying to reject a claim now, right? We're trying to reject H sub 0. So if, it fall, if the z-score, our test statistic, falls in the rejection region, we reject. If it doesn't, we fail to reject. That's it. That's a decision that's based on mathematics. So critical values are pretty important for us. Uh, they're going to separate the rejection region from the fail to reject region. Also, we're going to be finding our critical values the same way that, that we would before. So if you have an alpha of 0 0.05, if we're talking about a right tail test, your Z critical value is 1.645. Do you remember how to find those? We look at the 0 0.05 on the table, it's going to give us 1.645. Actually, we give you negative, but we're talking about right tail tests. We're, we'll talk about right, left, and two tail tests in just a minute. But for right now, stick with me. These are found the same way. Now, here's what the rejection region does. We just spoke about the value, the critical value that separates the rejection region from the fail to reject region. It's the region that if our test statistic falls in that area, we get to reject the null hypothesis. That's called the rejection region. If you fall in the fail to reject region, well then your test statistics in that area, it's saying you don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. This is, the rejection region, it's actually, it sounds bad, right? You don't want to be in the rejection region. That's like high school for me, I was in the date rejection region off the high school. <laughs> That's okay. But, but now, it's good to be in the rejection region because that means you have enough evidence to overturn your null hypothesis and prove your other one right. So the rejection region here is not a bad thing. It could be a good thing. Prove your statements. So this is the region that if our test statistic falls into, we get to reject the null hypothesis. test statistic falls into this region, you reject H sub 0 middle hypothesis. <coughs> okay, let me show you how this is going to work. Now, you're not going to be able to get this this far yet. I'm going to show you how to figure out the type of picture I'm going to draw here in just a moment. But here's how this particular problem, remember the problem we were dealing with last time, right? This is a continuation of that. It was this information. Here's how this would look. You're still going to be drawing this picture. It's the same picture all the time. I'm going to show you in a moment how to determine that this is a right tail test. I'll, I'll prove to you in just a second that this is going to be a right tail test. Here's how you do it. First thing you do is you look at your, your alpha. So let's assume that we're dealing with a 0 0.05 significance level. That's giving me a critical value of 1.645. So remember, zeros here, 1.645 will be right there. This is my critical val value. Write that down in your paper. This is a critical value. <coughs> Now,
Now, what that critical value does that we wrote up here, it separates the rejection region from the fail to reject region. Here's the separation. The area in the tails is the area that is your rejection region. So in here, this is the fail to reject region. Here, the tail, that's your rejection region. So this tail right here represents 0 0.05 as a proportion of, of your area right here. That's how we found our 1.645. We would look up the 0.05. It's going to give us a critical value of 1.645. We put that on our, our paper. This is the rejection region. This would be the fail to reject region. So just an overall little recap of how you do hypothesis testing. You're, you're there. You're, you're almost there. We're, we're about ready to do it, but there's only one piece of information I need to tell you, then we'll be good to go. Rock solid. Here's what you do. First thing, you state your claim. You state the opposite. You determine which one has the equal sign. That's going to be your h sub 0, your null. You determine which one doesn't. That's going to be h sub 1, your alternative. You always state your h sub 0 with an equal sign. That's how you get the value for your test statistic when you create your z-score. Now notice that on your paper, you have two z-scores, don't you? You have one that's a critical value, and you have one that is a test statistic. Are you, you following me on this? Your critical value is what you put on your paper. Your critical value, this is called the traditional method, is put on your paper. That separates the rejection region from the failed to reject region. Your test statistic, that number that you created that's based on your comparison between your sample data and your population uh, hypothesis, gives you that number. This is what you test. Well, it's called a test statistic. It's what you're testing against your critical value. So you compare these two numbers. You compare the 1.645 and you compare the 5.84. You look where the 5.84 is in relation to the 1.645. Does it fall in the fail to reject region or the rejection region? Can you tell? It's a number line. Where's 5? Is it here? This is negative. Where's 5? Is it here? It's like, it's like here. It's like here, actually. It's way over there. Is that in the failed to reject region or the rejection region? Rejection. Definitely rejection region. That tells you you are going to reject your null hypothesis. You say, this one's wrong, this one's right. Oh, yeah, just screwed my claim. That's how you make a decision. So it's, it's based on lots of information. It's an it's a involved process. These problems don't go quickly. You go slowly. You have to really work at it. There's seven steps to doing it. I'll show you all those seven steps as we keep going. <clears throat> now, what you also need to know is that your critical value will change depending on whether you have a left tail, a right tail, or a two-tail test. We'll be focusing on this. This is an important part for you, okay? You can't just memorize these numbers anymore. They're going to change sporadically uh, as, as you talk about a different situation. So let's go ahead. Let's see if we can... We can figure out one of these examples. So I'll say my alpha is 0 0.05. That's my significance level. I'll give you three cases. I'm going to change this a bit, but it's coming from, coming from here. Let's suppose that I had different h sub 1's, different alternative hypotheses. These are the ones that tell you whether you're going to be a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail <coughs> test. I'll make it very explicit in a moment. But here's our situations. Let's say that p was less than 0.5. It, this, this 0.5 is not that 0.5. Okay, I'm going back to this proportion being less than 50%. Oh, I just don't These are the only cases you can possibly have for an alternative hypothesis. Remember, the h sub 1's, those are the ones that don't have the equal sign. They're either going to be greater than, less than, or not equal to. So you'd have like h sub 1, or this h sub 1, or this one. Now here's how you determine what picture it is in every single case.
It's always going to be standard normal curve. And of course we'll have zero in the middle. But you need to know whether we're talking about a right tail test, a left tail test, or a two tail test. It's not always the same. So when we're looking at this thing, if you're talking about the proportion less than a certain value, less, where's less than? Is it to the left or to the right? Less than is to the left of something. So if you have a, a less than, see how the arrow's pointing to the left? You see that? You're talking about a left tail test on that. The arrow's pointing that way. The arrow's pointing that way, isn't it? If you make a little arrow out of that. If your h sub 1 says less than a certain value, you will have a left <coughs> tail test. This is the one we actually did over there. This was a right tail test. The reason why it was a right tail test, why I knew that, I said, okay, we're trying to say that proportion is big, bigger than a certain value. If it's big enough, it means it proved it right. So we're going to make a little stop over here for a right tail test. You see, what this is doing is saying, is it rare enough to prove this true? Is it, for, is it small enough, is it smaller enough than 50% to say yes, that's, this is accurate? Or in other words, h sub, h sub 0 is wrong. So this would be to the left of that, that value. This is smaller than 50%. Does that make sense to you? The right tail test says the other thing. It says, well, it has to be bigger than by a certain margin. And that margin is given, us, given to us by our significance level. So here, left tail test here, it's pointing to the right. It says a right tail test, bigger than a certain value. That's over to the right. How about this one? What's the not equal to? What do you think? It can't be left and it can't be right. Hmm? Well, we got to have a tail somewhere. Do you understand the idea of the less than and the greater than? You have to get these two before you can get this one. Some of you guys aren't, aren't, aren't really getting Let me go over it one more time. That way you, you really get it. You better kind of focus in on this. It's the last time we'll do it. Um, what you're trying to do in these situations is you're trying to prove this one right. If you have enough evidence, it would say that the proportion is less than 50%. It'd be far, farther enough to the left, farther enough or small enough to say that, that this is true. Basically, that h sub 0 would be wrong is the only way you'd be able to prove that. But the, the to the left idea is saying, okay, we're looking for, for values that are smaller than some, some number. Here, we have the opposite. We're looking for, for greater than. So we're looking for numbers that are smaller or numbers that are bigger. That's giving us a left or a right tail test. If we're not equal to, that means it could be either smaller or bigger. Does that make sense to you? Smaller or bigger says it's not a left tail test necessarily. It's not a right tail test necessarily. It's a two tail test. It could be either less than or greater than. So we get this, two tail test. Now, if our alpha is 0.05, that means the area in each tail for a two-tail test is 0 0.05. That's how you're finding your critical values. That's the way it's going to be. However, look up here at the board. Notice that all of our alpha is in this one tail. You with me? And all of our alpha is in this one tail. How much of our alpha is going to be in this tail? Good, half of it. Yeah, sure. Because now you're splitting it amongst two tails. This is why you can't memorize this number for this alpha all the time. Because if you have one tail, yes, that's what it's going to be. But if you have two tails, it's going to split it. Do you get me? It's going to be different. So with two tails, well, this is no longer 0 0.05. This is alpha over 2, or 0 0.025. This is no longer 0 0.05. 